We all know that food plays a key part in our well-being, and starting at a young age with the right nutrition helps lay solid foundations for healthy growth. But can the right choice of food make children smarter too? Is there such a thing as what has been called brain food? This school in Grenada is involved in a European Union research project that aims to find out how specific nutrients affect mental development and performance of infants, children and teenagers. We're trying to investigate and demonstrate in this project that nutrition plays an important role during pregnancy and in the child's early life. In the neurodevelopment of children, their psychomotor system, language, memory, attention, and so on. Researchers gave food additives with different types of valuable nutrients to pregnant women taking part in the study to find out whether their children will, on average, do better psychologically than their peers. Existing. In common food, for example in fish, there are important nutrients involved in brain development, such as omega-3 fatty acids, iodine or folic acid, that promote optimal development of the brain in the fetus and during the first year of life. This local family has come for another checkup. Every few years, parents and children who take part fill in questionnaires and take psychological tests. They're expected to demonstrate that early nutrition has a long term effect well after birth and infancy. <laughs> When I was three months pregnant, my doctor suggested I took part in this project. I was given packages of food supplements, which I had to take daily. They were delicious. Researchers use a brain-computer interface and memory tests to assess a child's mental performance. The Grenada experiments are just one example from a series of complementary studies in nine countries, totaling more than 15,000 children. The largest research project, which is providing data to the joint knowledge base, is taking place in Rotterdam. Researchers regularly conduct thorough medical examinations of mothers and children, taking their food habits into account. Pregnancy is, of course, a very important period as the organs are sort of start to develop then, but also diet during later life will be studied. And that starts with the breastfeeding, but it also includes how much snacks a child eats, how much fuzzy drinks it has, and even a child can be a picky eater or not. So that's what we're also relating to the development of behavior and the brain. The checkups that start at a pregnancy will continue until the children reach the age of 20. Along with a set of detailed questionnaires to give some insight on important aspects of the family's lifestyle, a typical examination includes allergy tests, measurements of lungs, heart, bones, eyesight and hearing. I thought the study was important for children in general and also it was in our own interest, as now we're getting full medical checkups with modern medical equipment. Combining physiological and psychological tests, researchers record a full picture of the child's physical and mental development. I like most of it, but sometimes it's a little bit scary. I like the lungs test the most. A set of psychological and behavioural tests show how well the family works together on challenging tasks and assesses the child's memory, reaction, risk aversion and motor coordination. We give them a frustrating task, for example a task where they are isolated and then we see how they react. We actually even film it and later rate it. Using magnetic resonance imaging, scientists study the physiological development of the brain. 
It's been shown that the brain continues to develop well into adulthood, and a diet rich in folic and fatty acids can be one of many important factors of healthy mental development and behavior. Cognitive function is certainly not only related to diet. There's, there's many things involved in cog cognitive development, including um, the intelligence of the parents, the environment that the child is in, um, in involved in, enriched environments versus some yeah, environments in, in which there's very little stimuli. All those play a role uh, in, in brain development and a cognitive function, and so you can't separate one from the other. So the best thing is to give the child all options so that they have a good environment, good nutrition, and uh, good parents. A detailed analysis of the collected data should result in concrete dietary recommendations that would favor children's mental development, helping them to grow intellectually. Scientists are expecting significant positive effects for a future European society. Just by improving the IQ by a few points, you're allowing people to develop in various ways, opening a better future for everybody. If we try to develop children in an optimal way, the population will progress. The economic and social benefit for Europe will be very big. The importance of good nutrition is impossible to deny. Thankfully, nowadays we're eating rich and tasty vegetables, fruits and other foods all year round, thanks to modern storage technologies. But how efficient are they? Food-related studies make a significant part of a wide-scale European bioeconomy research effort that also comprises of agriculture and forestry, marine and maritime research, as well as bio-based industry projects. In this research orchard near Leuven, biologists grow many varieties of apples. Each kind needs its particular storage conditions to keep it fresh and tasty for months. Freshly picked apples can go immediately to the consumer within a few weeks. They will be very nice to eat, but if you want to provide them the year round, we will need a certain cold chain with the right temperature and even gas composition conditions. Fruits and vegetables, seafood and other products remain safe and tasty as long as they haven't accidentally warmed up at some stage between the factory and your kitchen. But maintaining a cold chain costs. A lot of times, in order to be very efficient in regard to safety and quality, we are overdoing it with regards to energy and possibly the impact on the environment. So this project is trying to combine all these issues together, while of course keeping safety as the priority. Researchers work with the industry collecting data to build an accurate model of energy expenditure at every stage of the cold chain. I have to say that about 30% of the worldwide food production is lost because of the bad management of the temperature process. 60% of what we eat every day needs refrigeration. About 8% of worldwide energy consumption is taken up just by food refrigeration. With the impact on environmental issues, we have 2.5% of global CO2 emissions coming from refrigeration. So we can imagine the big impact of the food refrigeration technologies on our lives. In northern France, these freshly harvested green beans are quickly transported from the fields to the world's largest vegetable processing plant in Estremont, then on to distribution centers, supermarkets, and finally to be served in plates in homes in many countries. We are in a deep freeze warehouse for frozen products. The temperature is minus 18 degrees Celsius. Watching the temperature is important. A bit too high, and the shelf life of the frozen vegetables would be reduced. Too low, their texture would be damaged, making them less tasty. Factories such as this spend lots of energy on refrigeration, with 
with more research and innovation, these expenses can be reduced. We've realized that 30 to 40 percent of energy isn't actually working for the vegetables, but it goes into the environment, into the atmosphere. So it's a huge loss. The first part of this project is gathering information at ground level, what happens to the vegetables in the cold chain. And it is from this practical, real information that we can feed the project, reflect on the scientific research. Web-based models developed within the research project should allow food manufacturers, transporters and retailers to analyze their segments of the cold chain, which might help to optimize the energy costs while preserving safety and quality of the products. Researchers are looking into ways to make food last longer with less energy by finding optimal gas compositions, temperature regimes and innovative technologies that can keep food cold without environmentally risky refrigerants. The current cold chain is very sophisticated and quite advanced, but that doesn't mean to say that we can't improve it. Uh, I mean, for example, we could reduce energy use in the, in the cold chain. We may be able to increase or improve food temperatures and food safety. We may be able to improve food quality. We might be able to make food last for longer, for instance, which might have benefits in reducing waste. I'm going to eat my vegetables that keep me growing strong.